Hi there, this is Sean with a book review. In this video we're discussing a new cosy mystery series I've started reading. The series isn't new, but it's new to me, and so is the author. The author's name is Edward Marston, and the series is called The Railway Detective. The first book is here. As you could see from the cover, the novel is set in an historic period, 1850s England to be exact. I'll also put a picture of the cover up on the video. Now has the author done a good job in giving us 1850s England? I think he has. The scenes he set, the descriptions of the people, the clothes they wear, the way they act, speak and think, are all giving me the picture of 1850s England. I felt I was transported there. And what's really good about this is that the detail doesn't bog you down too much, so the story still flows. And that's what you want in a cozy mystery. Cozy mysteries are meant to be a fairly quick read, you know, because we focus more on characters and the relationships between those characters. For a historic cozy mystery, we still want some detail of history, but not too much. We don't want to be bogged down with info dumps. So one of the ways the author's given us an authentic feel to 1850s England in this novel is through some of the dialogue. One character in particular, who's the Lone Shark, he's from the seedier side of London in this novel. His dialogue is all slang. It's very clipped, a bit rough, you know, around the edges. But I found it so fun and so novel that an author would include that in a story. And I really hope that I see more of that type of thing in this series. The plot was too simple, even for a cosy mystery. One of the things I liked least about this novel is the fact that we learnt who the culprit was halfway through the story. The author actually spelt it out for us, told us in clear detail who the culprit was. That really spoiled a big part of this novel for me because in a cosy mystery, it's the mystery genre, we want that mystery element to be important. I mean, it's not the most prominent feature of a cosy mystery, but it's still important to have that mystery element, that bit of suspense, intrigue, not to know who the true culprit is until the end of the novel. Some people may guess the culprit early on, but I like to wait until the end to find out who it is. In this novel, we found out too early and it spoiled everything else that followed really in the novel. So the main storyline, main plot, is about a train robbery. Of course, it has to be about trains, hence, the title of the book and the title of the series. The thieves steal 3,000 gold coins and some bags of mail. I was a bit confused with the bags of mail at first because I wondered what interest that would have for thieves who had already stolen 3,000 gold coins. I mean, aren't the gold coins enough? But we learned that the mail bags are important because they hold people's secrets. And some of the people who write these letters are important people in society. So the robbers see it as another investment opportunity. They will blackmail people to keep those secrets secret. And on top of their 3,000 gold coins, they'll also have a few hundred pounds to play with. The way the main characters, who are officers from Scotland Yard, go about solving the crime in this novel is... A little bit simple as well. Um, they get to conclusions very easily from very few clues, and the main character has leaps of faith and leaps of intuition that sometimes don't pass the smell test. Really, you know, where are the where are the things linking these jumps together? Now, that's not the first time in mystery novels that it happens, but. 
if we add that to the fact that the plot wasn't the best and we found out who the culprit was too early, it's not looking good for this novel. The saving grace is the characters. And in this novel, there are plenty of characters that are really well written and really well crafted, main characters and side characters. The first character that I'll mention is Inspector Robert Colbeck. Now, for me, he is described as a bit of a 1850s James Bond type character without the cool gadgets, you know. He's described as good looking, charming, witty, intelligent, dresses well, he's got a bit of money stashed away. All the women seem to like him as well. And we find that out with one of the side characters. Another character I like to mention is Sergeant Victor Leeming. Now he works with Colbeck, but he's a rank below. Leeming is the opposite of Colbeck. So Leeming is not really intelligent, not really witty, not charming. He's described as not being good looking. The author describes him as being ugly as well, which is a bit cruel. And he doesn't have the same leaps of intuition and leaps of faith that Colbeck has. So he's not blessed like Colbeck is in all his attributes, but he has some positive attributes of his own. So he's very loyal. Um, he's very friendly and very nice as a character and he's also devoted to his job and to his family so even though he doesn't have the same high qualities that Colbeck has he has enough good qualities to make him a very good character and a very interesting character it's those differences in these two main characters and the way they play off each other that make it a good partnership in the novel but also very enjoyable to read the third main character that I'll mention is Superintendent Tallis. Now, he's the type of character that even though he's on the side of good, he throws banners in the works and blocks in place for our other characters when they're investigating the crimes. So what Leeming and Corbeck have to do is find creative ways to go around Tallis to solve the crimes. And that adds a bit of fun in the novel, but also, you know, we've got a bit of conflict, a bit of tension between the three characters as well. So we get that light and shade in how the characters are drawn out for us and that makes it just that bit more enjoyable and the characters a bit more three-dimensional and that's what you need in this type of novel, especially a cozy mystery novel. Now, the side characters in this novel really make it fun. The two side characters that I'd like to mention, other than the lone shark who I mentioned earlier, are Madeline and her father, Caleb. Now, Caleb is a train driver, and he was a train driver who was attacked during the robbery and was injured quite severely. Madeline is interviewed by Colbeck as part of the investigation, and we see an instant attraction between Madeline and Colbeck. Now, they've both got the hots for each other a bit. We see how that develops throughout the novel, but as Madeline's father, Caleb, recovers from his injuries, He's not so sure of Colbeck. He thinks Colbeck is a bit of an upstart, a bit too good for Madeline. He wants Madeline to marry somebody from the railway. Madeline, of course, does not want to marry somebody from the railway. She's interested in Colbeck. So we have a bit of tension between the three characters, as well as that interest between Madeline and Colbeck. That's also interesting in this novel and adds just that little bit more complexity in how the characters are developed and how they interact with each other. And that is why the characters in this novel are the saving grace. Overall, if we weigh up characters, plot, mystery element, all those things, I give this probably 2.5 and if I was generous, I'd say rate it to a three, but let's stick with 2.5 out of five because it's that missing mystery element in the plot and the fact that we're given the culprit halfway through that really make this novel a bit lower on the scale for me. 
And if I wasn't already kind of intrigued by the whole historic element and thinking that it might improve in book two and book three, etc., I may not have given this another go. But as it happened, I did borrow books one to three from the library quite quickly. And I will read books two and book three. So from the first look at this series, a 2.5 out of five, not a really high score, not looking to be one of my favorite cozy mystery series of all time, but you know, the only way is up, hopefully, and we may get good novels as we progress.